Okay, so we're going to begin our uh, going over our death packet. And um, this is the death packet. It's posted um, um, in the classroom. It's also, you can find it on the calendar. But we are going to start at problem 44 and then work, toward, and work towards the end. Then we'll come back and work the, the problems at the beginning. So um, I'm going to ask for, I'm not going to work all the problems. I'm going to work the problems that I'm asked to work. And we're going to do our best to work in a numerical sequences so that we can keep this as uh, quick as possible. So with that said, in the chat, if you could take just a moment and record the questions from 44 all the way to 60 that you would like to see. So some from 44 to 60, please record that in the chat. Okay, so uh, this video will cover problems 44 um, through 50, problems 44 through 50. Um, an assembly line machine is supposed to turn out bowling balls with a diameter of 8.55 inches. Each day, a simple random sample of five bowls are pulled and measured. If the mean diameter is under 8.35 or over 8.75, the machinery is stopped and engineer is called to make adjustments for production is resumed. The quality control procedure may be viewed as a hypothesis test with mu equal 8.55 and alternative not equal. What is a type two error? So we have, this is our null mu is this value, the alternative mu does not equal that value. All right, so type two, what is type two? Type two is fail to reject. So if I fail to reject, what am I believing? I'm believing this. Okay, so I'm believing that we're making balls of the correct, correct size, but because it's an error, a type two error would be saying uh, that they really, we really weren't doing that. So we believe that we're making balls of the right side, but in, when in fact, uh, we are not. So con we are continuing production because we're believing they're the right size, but in fact, we're not making the right size so continued production of the wrong size ball. Okay, I'm gonna pause that real quickly to make sure that... Okay, so the next question was asked was 46. What is the probability um, of a type two error when a hypothesis test is being conducted at the 5% level, alpha equal 0.05? So here's the thing. People always wanna go um, alpha plus beta equals one. Well, we don't know that, that's not true. So the fact that they give you alpha does not tell you beta. So consequently, um, we don't, and beta is measure of type two, that's a measure of type one. So type one plus type two does not equal one. So me telling you what the type, measure of a type one does not help you with type two, we don't have enough information. All right, so we don't have enough information for that one. So question number 47, which of the following statements is a true statement? Um, a type one error is a conditional probability. Power is a conditional probability. P value is a conditional probability. Type one error is a conditional probability and type two error are conditional probabilities. All of them are, and to be a conditional probability, we're saying given. And most of the time uh, for a type one error, given the null is true, uh, p-value, given the null is true, um, um, and uh, type two error was given that the null is false. So uh, almost everything we're talking about when we're talking about errors, powers, are all conditional probabilities. Okay, number 48, there is honestly a little bit of an issue with. So we'll talk about it and um, in a way we're gonna handle that. The manufacturer of a heart lung machines periodically checks a sample of its product and performs a major recalibration if readings are sufficiently off target. So in the heart lung machine, if it's su substantially off target, um, we are going to recalibrate. So the null, it would be on target. 
alternative off target. Similar, similarly, a rug factory periodically checks the size of its throw rugs combined coming off an assembly line and halts production if, me if measurements are significantly off target. So if they're on target, they keep running. If it's off target, they recalibrate. In both situations, the null hypothesis is that the production equipment is performing satisfactorily, in other words, on target. For a situation which is more serious concern, a type one or type two error. Truthfully, I'm going to ignore that because this is a, I mean, basically you are making value judgments. So when we actually do this, I'm going to skip number 48 because you really can't make a value judgment. Although I would argue human life is much more important than throw rugs. Uh, but for this particular instances, I'm going to skip that. So let's talk about these. If, um, what's, what's more significant? Well, I know this. If for the heart lung machine, it's not working correctly, if it's not working correctly, uh, then I'm producing this machine and people are gonna die. So um, a type one error isn't that critical. A type, two, a type two error would be extremely critical because all of a sudden I'm producing something that's going to not work for people because it's a heart lung um, situation, that'd be really, really bad. Uh, so a um, committing a type two error um, would be really bad rejecting um, for, for the machine. Um, for the carpet manufacturer, I don't know about you, but when I put a throw rug down, if it's off by an inch or so, no one really cares. It fits in the room, it lays on, the, and it's like, we have a few inches around the room, a few feet around the room. So the fact that it's off by an inch or so, not gonna be that big of a deal. So consequently, they don't wanna stop and recalibrate. Um, they're not gonna to wanna to stop and recalibrate if their carpet thing is off slightly. So in their case, a type two error, I mean, excuse me, a type one error would be really bad. So with the lung machine, if it's, um, if it's off target, if I, if I believe it's on target, and it's really off target, that's bad. That's a type two error. So for a lung machine, that's really bad. For the carpet machine, if I believe it's on target, but it's off target, not so bad. So consequently, a type one error is bad for the one and a type two error is bad for the other. But this is a value judgment. And because it's a value judgment, C and E are reasonable responses. So consequently, I'm gonna have 48 as a skip. And by the way, one of the things that on these type one and type two errors that's really important, if you will actually write down a null and alternative, so you can say reject and fail to reject, um, so that you identify what it is you're doing, because otherwise it becomes extremely confusing. Problem 49. Given an experiment, the mean is 25 and the alternative is greater than 25 and a possible true population value of 26, which of the following increases with an increase in sample size? Okay, so as you increase sample size, error decreases. So increase in error goes down. We like increasing sample size. But as we increase sample size, power goes up, all right? So as we increase sample size, power goes up. And that's why we like increasing sample size. Increasing sample size decreases error, doesn't eliminate it, but increasing error decreases the sampling error or the sampling variation. So increasing sample size is a good thing. It helps with some things and eliminates other things. What is power? Power is correctly rejecting a false null. Power 
is a conditional probability that says that we are correctly rejecting the false null, right? Power is correctly rejecting a false null. Oops, I just messed up my screen for just a second. Okay, question number 50. Which of the following statements is incorrect? The significance level of a test is a probability of a type two error. Significance level is alpha, all right? And alpha is type one. Type two is beta, all right? So alpha is type one, type two is beta. So the significance level is um, type one. And they said incorrect. So that's A. 